Welcome to the Essential Geopolitics Podcast from Stratfor, part of the RAIN Network. I'm Ryan Boll, in for Emily Donahue. In this podcast, I'm speaking with Cesar Martinez, our Latin America analyst, about the Inter-American Development Bank election. Cesar, welcome. Well, uh, thank you very much, Ryan. So why are we talking about this bank in particular? What's so important about the uh, IDB? Well, uh, Inter-American Development Bank was established uh, 61 years ago, and it's the uh, most important uh, uh, source of financing for uh, development projects for the Latin American region. Uh, basically, uh, it's even more important than the World Bank or uh, for these kind of projects for Latin America. So it's a very active institution uh, in um, providing resources for governments and now also to private and um, public partnerships, and especially in the context of the uh, economic needs that uh, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic are, is creating, uh, it will play a very important role in the future, even more than it has in the past. So what's different about this particular election uh, to chair the IDB? Well, uh, the IDB had a similar arrangement, uh, non grid and rule, uh, than what the United States and Europe have for the World Bank and the IMF. If uh, our uh, people who listen to us uh, remember the World Bank is usually headed by an American, the IMF is usually headed by an European. Well, in the case of the Inter-American Development Bank, uh, it's uh, the arrangement has been for these 61 years that uh, someone from a Latin American country will head the bank and the U.S. will usually have the deputy position. Now it's different because the Trump administration has decided to nominate an American to head the World Bank for the very first time. Uh, this has created a good amount of controversy across the region. And it's not only because it's an American, but also the the uh, person who's been nominated, his name is uh, Mauricio Claver Claron, uh, is a very active in the uh, in, in terms of advocating for a harsher approach of U.S. policy to Cuba and Venezuela. And while a lot of people agree with those stances, some, several others do not. So it's become a controversial figure for these two reasons, being an American and because of political views. So, Cesar, uh, how long does the chairperson of the IDB hold power? Is this possible that this is something that the Trump administration could leave behind even if they lose power in the November election? Great question, Ryan. The term is uh, for five years. The uh, uh, Currently, uh, the, the current president is from Colombia and he's ending uh, his third five-year term. Uh, he will. He's not running for, for, a, for a new for a new term. There have only been four presidents in the history of the 60-year uh, bank, so they tend to be there for a long time. Um, the uh, Biden campaign has said that they will not support the candidacy of Mr. Claver Claron, uh, which uh, would give him, if he and he, if, if the U.S. candidate wins, uh, make him kind of a lame duck because he will not have the support of the incoming administration if uh, Biden wins the November election, uh, put him in a very in a very difficult position, especially to uh, uh, fulfill his promise to help in the increase of capitalization that the bank needs. The last one was in 2010. Uh, they, they they increased uh, 70 billion. Now uh, the bank requires a further capital increase to be able to comply with all the different programs and help the region after the COVID outbreak. So this will not make uh, the U.S. candidate not being able to comply with this or fulfill these promises um, and put in a very awkward position. The reason why the U.S. Uh, presented a candidacy was mostly because uh, there was a split in the region, Argentina and Brazil presenting their own candidates. And, um, and the U.S., the Trump administration saw a good opening there to try to exert some influence. However, it has ended up not working that way. Uh, this, again, as I mentioned, is a controversial candidacy for different reasons. So uh, given that uh, the vote cannot be done in, in person due to the outbreak, and it's a schedule in September um, to be done online, different countries are 
uh, now proposing a, a much more elegant solution, delaying the election until next year, uh, because until they can meet in person. So this was a proposal that was originally presented by the European Union. The European Union has a 13% share of the bank. Uh, yeah, it, it's for the Americas, but they do have a presence there. So they uh, saw this as a diplomatic compromise of saying, well, let's try to delay the election. Uh, Chile added uh, to this proposal, and lately now uh, Mexico, Argentina, and Costa Rica have also uh, uh, supported the idea of postponing the election. Within them, they are very close of having the 25% needed to basically veto uh, any any election. There's a 75% um, uh, quorum required. And uh, I think they, they, depending on whether you, all the countries of the European Union uh, are are in favor of this, uh, they will have these uh, 25% needed. If not, uh, Mexico, Chile, Argentina, and Costa Rica, they will need still some support of some other countries uh, to to get this 25%, but shows that, um, that uh, a lot of countries are saying, we don't care if, if, if Trump is supporting or, or really pushing hard for this election. We want to wait and see uh, what happens in November in order to, to, to support a candidate. Well, Cesar, thank you for that analysis. If you would like to read more geopolitical forecasts and analysis of the geopolitical challenges facing Latin America, subscribe to Stratfor Worldview Podcast. Listeners get a special subscription rate. Go to stratfor.com slash podcast offer. All one word, stratfor.com slash podcast offer. I'm Ryan Bull. Thanks for listening.